on one side there are spiritual aspirations and on the other side material desires what are the minimum needs oh, we have to remember food is a need drink is a need and as a little place to dwell is a need their needs are very few a place to live a place to sleep that's very new very few so if you cannot discriminate between this hmm, you have you have built a house and you have seen other fellow has built a big house uh, yeah. for example if you are a single person or two persons a small house is there okay you can be happy but say your neighbor is having a, a big house what will you do with the big house it is a headache also <laughs> every day it takes such a big long time to keep all these things and keep cleaning and all these if there are only two one or two persons in a big house it is not a wise thing <laughs> it is not practical <laughs> yes <laughs> so it is a persistent fight between these two things these are two opposite things spiritual aspirations and material desires so a persistent fight between man's spiritual aspirations and his material desires between soul and the physical body emotional and mental aspects of the bodily personality is god given end of great significance and importance being the governing factors in our spiritual evolution so in our spiritual evolution <coughs> these are not uh, as such they are not obstacles but how we react to them that creates the obstacle people where people misunderstand is that oh these are all the worldly things are obstacles they are not by themselves they have nothing to do with you how you make use of this how your mind reacts that makes all these things <coughs> it is properly evaluated as a spiritual necessity as an instrument our body is is telling about our body it is properly evaluated as a spiritual necessity why should we have a body some people think that if we are spirit why we should have a body if we are a soul it is true that everyone is a soul but it is also true that he should have a body what for if you have to make any progress in in your journey of the soul you need the body that is what the what the masters and what the scriptures tell us your body is a fundamental instrument given to you for a practice for your progression for your progress without body there is no progress <laughs> some people think that after coming out of body we are going here and there and we have good progress there no that is all false very clearly lord has given bhagavad gita when you leave the body you have to wait until you get another body to make further progress in between there is no progress at all because you have no instrument <laughs> so never think that this physical body is useless only soul is important that means you are not you don't know what is soul if somebody thinks like that soul is very important body is of no importance if it is of no importance why god has given you this he must be a fool <laughs> yeah. 
So we must have a clear understanding of this, the purpose of our body. It is very purposefully given for us. Eventually the spiritual nature becomes the dominant factor and the threefold personality becomes subordinate to it, which is their true relation to each other. The threefold personality. So, yesterday in the class I told you, in spiritual astrology what must explained about the levels of consciousness, individuality, personality, and then soul experience. So when you are, when our consciousness is awakened only at this level, individuality, so it is like a shell. But Master explains that until your consciousness gets awakened and you are grown, you are grown. Until, until that time, the shell is a protection. Just like how a chick in the egg, within the egg. So, the shell of the, the shell of the egg is a protection to the chick until the embryo grows into a chick. Until then it is a protection. But after the embryo has grown into a chick fully grown, then this shell is not a protection anymore, it is obstruction. You have to come out of it. So when it is grown, then the chick makes a knock and then when this knock, this knock is listen, the mother hen listens to this knock, it breaks the shell. This is the best example, this is the best example for the process between the guru and the disciple. When the disciple grows into this and gets ready, then the guru recognizes and he breaks, he, he helps the disciple to break this shells. <laughs> so the shell of individuality is broken, then you come out and then get into personality level. So this is another shell as I told you, is also a shell. And after some births of development, then this is also broken and then you get into the soul experience. That is the real existence. So therefore, this personality should be subordinated to the soul. <coughs> That is the real existence and the real procedure. That is what he is explaining. The personality, the threefold personality becomes subordinated to the soul, which is their true relation to each other. It is the real, it is the it is a perfect relation. If personality is subordinated to the soul, it is a perfect relation, true relation. Otherwise, if the personality dominates the soul, when the personality dominates the soul, then what happens? We cannot experience the real happiness. That is the pro that, there lies the problem. Why we cannot be happy? Because in the average human being who is not, who has not entered into the path, then when, then when we make, do not make any effort, and then our soul is dominated by personality aspect. Then you are disturbed by everything. 
you cannot experience happiness. Happiness is the real expression of soul. Happiness does not belong to the lower levels. Happiness is the experience of soul. But since your personality dominates soul, you cannot experience happiness. In the name of happiness, we do so many things. <laughs> but that is not happiness. The physical conveniences, inconveniences, all this we misunderstand to be... Huh? When it is very hot, if we have air conditioning, then you say, ah, now I am happy because uh, there is air conditioning. We put on air conditioning machine and you feel happy. Okay. So now you, you record it. Now, do you accept that it is happy? Yes, this is happiness. You record your word and then wait until winter is there. When it is very cold, you switch on this air conditioner. No, 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 no. Why? Now it is very cold. So therefore, you switch on the heater. And now when it is hot, then you say, ah, now I am happy. But you said you were, you feel happy when it is, when you have the cool, cooling machine on. Now you say you are happy because now the warming machine is on. So your measure of happiness is completely, it has no basis. So it is changeable. So real happiness is never changeable because it belongs to soul. So your, your, your impression of happiness that is always changes. That is what the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, pairs of opposites, Hap happiness and unhappiness, desire and hatred, sorrow and joy. So you always, you are in between these two. Once this side, once this side. If you get what you want, what you desire, then you feel, oh! If you do not get what you desire, oh. once like this, once like this. <laughs> If you are, if your personality is subordinated to the soul, then this will not happen. You will be always happy. <laughs> that is what the Lord explains in the twelfth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, which we, many times we have studied. The twelfth chapter, Bhakti Yoga. Santushtat satatam yogi. Satatam means always. He is always, in any conditions, he is always happy. Huh? If today you have a good feast, okay. If tomorrow you have nothing to eat, only water to drink, then also he is happy. A real devotee, a real yogi is always happy in any condition. There is no complaining. For a yogi, for a devotee, there is no complaint at all. For a non-yogic person only, there is always complaints. Whatever, whatever is given to you, still it is complaints. That is the problem. <coughs> so this is this is what we have to remember is personality should be subordinated to soul. This we have to for this practice we have this body. If we have, don't have the body, we cannot we have no instrument to practice. How can you practice? <laughs> Vasudeva. Vasudeva.